Hi, my name is Grace Shalom Hopkins. <laughs> you know the drill. And welcome back to Spin Weekly. Today we are discussing Rambouillet. Rambouillet is a sheep breed that is closely related to Merino. It's called the French Merino a lot of times, and it has a fascinating story. So I'm gonna pop in. Yeah. I'm going to pop in and tell you all about this breed and its history and some of its characteristics as I spin, but beforehand I wanted to tell you how I thought about the actual fiber itself rather than, you know, its history. I went ahead and I dyed this Mardi Gras inspired, no particular reason it's not Mardi Gras season. Uh, but I was feeling the love. Maybe it's because it's Pride Month, and when I think of Pride, I think of Queens, and when I think of Queens, I think of Mardi Gras. <laughs> so maybe that's where I was going with it. I don't know. Um, I did something a little bit out of the ordinary. I showed you how I dyed this. You can, yeah, you can find the dye instructions in my book dye which I've linked down below but it's pretty straightforward I hand painted one half and I kettle dyed the other half um in the book I just go more into detail on my like dyeing philosophy um but I wanted to see what would happen if I applied a kettle colorway with a hand painted colorway that I used the same colors on like a dyed Monet this is the result uh you know because i can't just you know i was gonna send that to somebody i was well if you get anything from our house usually it's got bean bean uh essence on it so <laughs> anyway um i wanted to experiment with that because i can't just spin a plain undyed skein it just doesn't work for me I think it went really well. I love how the kettle brought in the more like autumnal almost <clears throat> shades to this colorway where the hand painted part kept the color strong and vibrant. As for the Rambouillet, I thought it was lofty and springy and soft and fantastic. And why in heaven's name do we not have Rambouillet coming out of our ears in the same ratio as Merino. Like Rambouillet people, it is fantastic. I read a lot on the internet on how it was difficult for beginners to spin because it was so lofty. Um, but I didn't get that. I'm not a beginner, so maybe I've forgotten. And I didn't need to spin it fine. Like it said, I just spun it autopilot when I do these breed studies, um, unless otherwise noted. Everything is spun on my default, which ends up being... You're like right in the way, bro. Like a DK weight. Um, I'm not a particularly uh, consistent spinner. Um, and I don't try to be like mechanically consistent. I like some of that texture. Um, and I'm sending this skein to a Dorset Defender who is a Patreon patron who supports the show financially. So that person will see that there are some inconsistencies in diameter, but it all evens out by the end. So all that rambling to say, on my autopilot, it ended up a DK and I think it'll probably bloom to a light bulky. Um, I didn't have any problems. It didn't want to break on me. I didn't feel like the staple length was especially short, um, but that could have been just this particular batch, which I got from BZB Fiber, which I will link down below. We just introduced Puffs. They're uh, gluten-free so she can have it and she's a little obsessed with the bottle. Not so much the puffs, but the bottle. <laughs> uh, anyhow, um, I feel like it's going to bloom to a light bulky, but I didn't have any trouble, like I said, with any of the drafting. I didn't feel like I needed to spin it short, forward, draw, or any of the specialty, like, ultra short staple length techniques. I thought it was pretty, 
out of the gate beginner friendly i i honestly would have classified it as beginner friendly so anyway all of that rambling aside let's hop into the spin itself so that way you can see what's happening um the voiceover for the dying portion is available to patreon patrons you can follow that link down below to check that out for everybody else Enjoy some music during the day, and then we are gonna dive deep into this cool breed and its really interesting history, and I will see you on the other side. Okay, so here we are, and I'm doing a handheld video, which is a little shaky, but I wanted to try something a little new. Um, let me know how you think. So here I'm using a blend of Dharma Trading Company, Gay Wool, and Jacquard Acid Dyes. Uh, you can see the bottles as I use them. I am doing the hand-painted technique here, which means you dilute the dye in water and vinegar and then apply to the fiber. Um, one handy tip is when you're doing sort of a self-striping, you can kind of trace out the parameter using the back of your spoon that you mixed with. That helps kind of give yourself a visual line for the first few pours. Also, I want to note that I use more water than most people. My dyes aren't as concentrated. Um, and that's personal preference because I do like them to run slightly. If you don't like running, you're going to need to use less water and a higher dye concentration. That's my hot pro tip there. Okay, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just adding dye in three places with the yellow being the lightest and the unification color. Um, when you apply the dye, regardless of how much dilution you use, you're going to want to make sure that it passes to the uh, back of the fiber. So you may need to flip the fiber over and apply dye to the backside or you will risk getting white spots. So just like any dye method, if white spots aren't your goal, you need to, you know, kind of open up the strands, make sure you got everything in all the little wooly nooks and crannies. Okay, so you can see that I'm checking, seeing what's happening, there's some white spots. I also here am going for a gradient, so I want to blend out that transition really well. So I'm pushing down and mixing and really manipulating this fiber. And I'll do the same thing with the purpley magenta side. So now that you're finished, you're going to go ahead and fold the plastic wrap in. You can make this as tight as you want. Um, I did not make this as tight as I should have. Uh, so just bear in mind that you may want to make it even more leak proof. Because when it leaks in the microwave, it will leak dye into other places. However, because I use quite a bit of water, I know there's going to be some dye shifting, and that's kind of what I'm looking for, especially at those bins. Now, I couldn't pick it up with one hand, so I had to skip. So you microwave it until the water runs clear. Now, the water at the bottom of the pan had run clear, and it took way longer than two minutes. Uh, basically, what's happening is you're steaming it in the microwave, and then you just rinse it out. So there you can see how it pooled and caused some shifting at the bottom. Okay, so to kettle dye, you put your fiber in a pot of water and vinegar according to your dye's instructions. I find the trick to not felting is to let the fiber heat up 
with the water. So a gradual increase. Now I just sprinkled the dye directly on top, starting with the lightest colors. I added a little bit of brown for some variation. And once the water ran clear, after I'd covered it and let it sit, I added the green at the center and then the pink at the edge. Now the trick is you always start with the palest possible color. Then again, you just press to manipulate the dye in the places you want it to be. Um, and you cover and you let sit. Now you can use a smaller or a larger pan. You can use any type of placement. You can be much more careful. I wanted quite a bit of shift with the understanding that the colors were going to blend. So my pink especially faded out pretty intensely um, and mostly just ended up like orange or like dark. <laughs>
so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you found that to be as fascinating as I did. And if you have worked with Rambouillet or know anything interesting about Rambouillet, please leave it in the comment section down below so we can all learn from your experience and your wisdom. If you liked this breed study, hit the like button and you know, while you're in the comment section, leave in your interesting Rambouillet thoughts. You could suggest a breed to study, uh, and preferably if it's a breed you want to study that's like not Merino, leave a link to how I can acquire some of that fiber, because that has been somewhat challenging. <laughs> um, so yeah, like, subscribe so you don't miss any of these shenanigans. If you really appreciate what we do here, you want to get more content like the voiceovers, go ahead and check out our Patreon family. We're pretty awesome there. I love you guys. And you make it possible to film the show. So, I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>